I made a real working Game Boy game in 2023. This works within real limits of the console and works on Game Boy emulators. Here I have it running on my 3DS, which is emulating Game Boy. The best part is, you can play this game right now with almost no work. I don't have the means to test it, but it should also work on real hardware. I did all of this with a single tool and a lot of stubbornness. Here's how I did it. The tool that I used is called GB Studio, which is an all-in-one Game Boy game development engine. Think Unity or Unreal, but with only four colors. Actually, that's not entirely true. The people who make this engine have given it compatibilities to make Game Boy Color and Super Game Boy games, but I opted for Classic Green. Here's the final project. Interesting, huh? The game that I made is pretty short, only having a couple of screens, but it's a fully playable game. The engine has some major limitations in what types of games you can make. It seems that the most comfortable types of gameplay are top-down RPG like Zelda and 2D platforming like Mario. You can make some other types, but these are the styles that I worked with. Not that it matters, since these are the styles that almost every fan Game Boy game would be in. I started by messing around within the engine to get used to it. The best spot for this was the built-in example game, which showcases all styles of gameplay possible in the engine, as well as some beautiful pixel art. After some messing around and figuring out how to do basic things like change the screen, I made my own project. I decided that it would be like Link's Awakening, being 2D top-down most of the time, but switching up to platformer in capes. Though this engine is all-in-one, you have to make the art in external programs. I opted for Pixelmator Pro for making sprites, and Tiled for creating backdrops. I'm a game designer, not a pixel artist, so after a couple of major failed attempts, I gave up and downloaded these tile sets which are made for the Game Boy, both of which will be provided in the description. I designed two floors for a house as well as a surrounding area, making it functional with bounding boxes. After all the time struggling to learn the basics, finally knowing what I was doing and walking around my own creation was magical. This gave me the energy I needed to make all of this. To mix up the simplistic exploration gameplay, I decided that I would include combat against little wolves. My first idea was to have classic Zelda combat with a sword, but I just couldn't get this to work. I tried relying on the built-in on hits command, but nothing I did worked. The wolves completely ignored hitting or being hit no matter what I did. After a ton of trial and error, along with noticing that my sword did not look that impressive when used, I decided to scrap the whole thing and made a basic menu-based system. This is a lot less flashy, but no less complicated. When you interact with a wolf, you get one of three options, slash, dodge, or run. If you do slash, you use your sword on the wolf, dealing one of three health points, but having one in three chance to lose one of your own. Dodge has odds split five ways. Two do nothing, two deal you damage, but one can heal you a damage. The last function, run, gives you a one in four chance to get hit, but other than that you're fine. You can heal your health back by sleeping in any of the many beds around the map. The combat is not deep or challenging at all, but it's a decent first try, an example of what is possible, which I feel sums up this whole game. Apart from the combat, you have some exploration, dialogue, and platforming to beat this very short game. The joy does not come from doing an exciting feat or conquering a tough challenge. The joy comes from the experience of walking around a world made in a Game Boy in 2023 and taking in the world that I built. And here we have the game in action. So this part's not scripted, but this is what you'll see when you boot up the game. Uh, you got, uh, introduction, controls, credits, and start game. If you, uh, go through one of them, text goes, and then after it finishes, you get the menu again. So I'm just gonna start game. Uh, and I am not playing the music, you'll have to do this, do it for yourself, because I cannot make art or music. Um... All this was taken from other things, like, so, except for the music, which I made myself, and, uh, I, I heard a very good description, the song that's playing right now sounds like a beehive, so just play it on mute. But yeah, this is the game, it's, it's really simple, it's, it's a Zelda-type game, uh, but, you know, you got working signposts, you can head down to this town, and this is where you'll want to go when you first start. Uh, there are two houses in this uh, this part of the town that you can explore. Up here, uh, you will find this old man, and there's still bugs. Uh, he's not supposed to disappear, but you know what? I don't care. Uh, and he'll send you on a quest to get a, uh, daisy. Technically, you don't need to talk to him, but, uh, that's, that's how you get all the juicy lore. 
dogs barking. That's fun. I, I love when they decide to bark when I'm recording video. In that house, you'll get a side quest, but I'm not doing that because I want to leave that for a surprise for you guys to play. So if you try to talk to one of these wolves, there's like the only good track that I made place. Um, and then does that. If you're right next to the wolf, he should follow you. But other, but that's kind of hit or miss uh, with his. Kind of goes in uh, against his regular code to walk around. So that's fine. So you want to come over here because the old man said that's the north of your house and it's the only way to go. Because if you go actually up, you'll not get there. And you see, you go to a cave. You have 2D. Uh, it's lagging a little bit uh, because of the wolf. Uh, the wolves have an absurd amount of code in them to make this. The combat system. Yes. Uh, so I explained this uh, in the uh, scripted parts. Uh, and hopefully I'll have some footage to show. So as you see, just what I've been doing, I hurt the wolf a little bit, but I did get hit. Uh, and you can see that from the little two down there. So now that you have the sword, you can slash this. Uh, this is jumping, which you can do. And look, you're up here. Uh, but yeah, I can beat this game in like three minutes. Uh, oh, great, I fell down. You don't want to do that, because that slows you down. And there are two wolves in this area, so that's why it's super laggy. <laughs> it's, uh... Probably could have optimized the wolves a little bit more. So now you're in this giant hub area. It, it, it's seriously massive. Um, so much so that it's really struggling to load. But there's some houses you can go to. Uh, there's, like, this cave over there. And up here we have this mountain. Uh, and that is you'll want to go to, but this is gonna be the end of this little segment. Uh, pass it back to me, uh, voiceover me. If this game looks at all interesting to you, I have a download in the description. You can download the ROM, which should work on every Game Boy emulator, as well as original files if you want to mess around with the game yourself. If you don't trust files in a link, I don't blame you. The ROM is also available directly from my official Discord server. The description also holds the tile sets I used to make the worlds in the game and the tools I used to make this whole thing work. If you have any interest in making a game at all, even if it's just a hobby, I highly recommend you try to make a Game Boy game. The strict limitations on what you can do really makes you rethink game design, while the simplicity of the engine makes the learning curve manageable. Watch a couple of YouTube tutorials and you too can be making a game. This is far from my best work, but I feel that the practice of making this thing has made me better at game design as a whole. And come on, it's just plain cool to make a game for a literal brick. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, check out some of my other contents and subscribe. I do game reviews, and I plan to do more game design contents like this video. In fact, I could use some help on that. Please leave a comment telling me some game design topics that I can discuss, whether that is a deeper dive into the benefits of simplicity, an analysis on specific aspects of game design, a critical review of a game from the perspective of its design, a game idea that you want me to make a dream design for, or anything else you guys can think of. See y'all later. Bye.